There is this guy who describes himself as a trainer and a writer who tends to make lists on Twitter. Stuff like dieting, working out, and sometimes more political lists like institutions that he has seen break down and lose public interest, like the government, mainstream media, higher education, and so forth. But it was one list in particular that garnered backlash. His list of how to be a beautiful woman. And in this list, he said, number one, be thin. Now, what I think he meant by this is the whole anti-fat acceptance movement. It's just not healthy and it's not attractive to the opposite sex. The opposite sex is biologically attracted to health. And as a trainer, I think this was his point by this comment. And I would agree. I don't even think it's that controversial. There are plenty articles that talk about being physically fit and how exercise makes you more attractive. Studies even show waist to hip ratio as an indicator. Number two, be able to cook. Now, this is spot on. This was a simple concept that I thought about even when I was 12 years old. If I wanted to be the best woman possible, I knew that being a good cook was part of that list. Every woman should know how to cook. My mother and my siblings appreciate me when I'm around and I can cook and we can all either bond in the kitchen or I can provide a meal. I mean, it's just such a magical thing. Patrick Wainis, a behavior expert, PhD, even explains why this works. Have long hair. Well, I actually love chopping off my long locks for the more mature look, but I think what he meant by this is that really short anti-feminine look, which again, I would agree with. So many beautiful women start doing strange things like chopping off their hair to make it look all punk and edgy, and it just ruins their feminine look. And according to studies, it in fact does make men perceive women to be more attractive because it is considered a sign of health. So, okay, maybe mine is a little bit shorter than it used to be, but clearly I've got a healthy head of hair, so you. And uh, the next one is wear makeup. Okay, so this one I can see as a little bit controversial. To the left, they will scoff and say, misogyny. But the right also seem to think that makeup makes you a thought and uh, that it is trickery. But I think that it is a valid point. The point is that it is feminine. Even as a little girl, it was fun to play with makeup and pretend to be a grown-up lady. It's simply feminine and we want our women to be feminine. And there is a point about makeup. There is a difference between plastering on makeup to trick people and completely change the shape of your face and wearing a little bit to accentuate your natural feminine and features. Think of the classic 1950s pinups. They were feminine, not contoured like a drag queen, but enough to look presentable and take pride in your appearance. I don't think we should object to that. And again, studies show this as well. Just look at these images. These women are not plastered in makeup. They still look like themselves, but makeup gives a little bit more youthfulness and attractiveness to their features. Next up, be feminine. Hmm. An obvious point. A feminine woman will be perceived as beautiful, just as a masculine man will be perceived as handsome. Controversial today, I know, but it shouldn't be. And next up is be graceful. I would have to agree with this as well. There is a reason ballerinas are graceful and considered feminine. It's in our nature to be this way, and a man will find it attractive. Be sensual. This is another one that goes hand in hand with grace and being feminine. It just makes sense. This will always make you appear beautiful and graceful. I think women forgot this when they tried to compete with men by being men. Next up, shave, should without saying. Yep. <laughs> This just reminds me of the time that I forgot to shave my armpits when I performed on stage for a crowd and I was mortified. But I laugh about this because it really isn't a big deal today in this SJW society that we live in. Today they embrace armpit hair and leg hair. They even dye it colors. And uh, I can't think of anything else that would repulse a man more and be less feminine. Be fashionable. Fair point. I think it's nice to have men and women be fashionable adults. When you can take pride in your appearance, it's not only a sign of respect for others, but also yourself. And then he follows that up with wear pink and feminine colors. Okay, I'm a little bit guilty there. I like black, but uh, this may just be his ideal take on what he finds to be a beautiful woman. And uh, okay, I can understand where he's coming from with that. Love men. 
I mean, this just makes sense. How attractive is a woman with a stank face who hates men? I'd say not very attractive. When a woman can appreciate men and respect them, they will be sought after. It's just human nature. I mean, think about it. If you're talking to someone and they just don't like you right off the bat and you can tell, chances are you will in return not like them back. But if you're friendly and approach people in a loving way, chances are they will like you back. It's basic principles of communication skills. And on a deeper level, it's just important. Men are fathers, brothers, sons, and we depend on working together as a unit and not being at odds with each other. And he follows that up with listen to men. So many times women just brush men off, brush off their feelings or what they have to say because that's how women empowerment goes. Listening to men will go a long way. And then he finishes off the list with stay classy, ladies. I think the list was pretty good, but I think the fact that it was a list and therefore short will make people take it the wrong way and just say misogyny. And uh, that would be breaking the last rule on the list by not listening. If you really take the time to listen to it, it makes sense. There may be other things I would add to the list, like maybe being a mother, but if you're a single lady, this list will suffice. I would also maybe say smile, but perhaps that goes under being graceful or sensual. Smiling goes a long way. Being happy instantly makes you more attractive as a man or woman. And this list actually fits with the points made in psychology today on attractiveness. They make a point about changeable features in women that can make them more attractive, and there are a bit more stable features, so men can't control it as much about attractiveness. And uh, they include factors like self-care, posture, and attitude. Masculinity, somewhat attractive to women, was comprised of some of these stable features, depending on your gym time, of muscularity, shoulder width, larger chest, and bigger jaw. Femininity, somewhat attractive to men, contained more changeable features of wearing makeup, longer hair, and greater femininity in posture, body language, etc. Finally, pleasantness, somewhat attractive to both men and women, was all about being happy, positive, and friendly in attitude. Honestly, this is the stuff that we should be thinking about. It's some pretty good stuff in there, and uh, I'm not offended by it. Are you? What else would you add to the list? If you want to see more from me and the rest of the Rebel team, like and subscribe.